Welcome to Smart Health Talk with your host, Elaine McFadden. Hey, everyone. We did it. Woo! You're listening to Smart Health Talk Radio Show on KCAA, and I'm your host, Elaine McFadden. Uh, I'm a registered dietitian with a master's in public health, so I get to be your personal dietitian right now, and I hope you're going to choose to stay tuned in for the entire show because we got some critical information for your neighborhood, for your life, for your children, your family. That's what we specialize in here, making sure our public stays protected because I tell you, you may think you're safe, but there's a lot of nasty stuff going on out there. I tell you, there is like pesticide spraying right and left. If it's not the city or the county or the state, it's like biz local businesses. It's your neighbor, uh, your next door neighbor, your neighbor down the street. All these people spraying pesticide and they're drifting right over onto your house. And I tell you, you should be worried because these pesticides are now being classified by the state as cancer causing. That is how serious this is. And I tell you, that is just the tip of the iceberg for the kind of information that I found out. I, you don't want to be exposed to this stuff. You do not want your family, your pets, your loved ones to be exposed to these poisons. And that's what they are. I don't care what, how much they try to normalize it, create all these commercials, making, oh, yeah, save for your family, spray it all over your yard. Yeah, right. I'm telling you, they're asking you to spray a cancer-causing substance. You're, you're putting it around your dog's neck, too, with these flea collars, and they are pure pesticide, hormone disruptors. Read the instructions. Please read the instructions before you buy, because you will be shocked. You are not allowed to touch your dog for, like, days, and you have to keep all the kids away from it. I mean, on and on and on, it's very serious, and we're pretty much feeding our animals pesticides as well it's pure poison uh, there are better ways of doing this and that's all the kind of stuff we talk about on our social media and we are there on social media for you uh, a lot of, most of the time uh, but busy 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 on you know everything from Twitter to uh, Instagram we got our website going on just full of information for you that I mean it could be life-changing information you could be going through our website and just going, wow, I've been like using this stuff like every single day. And you're like, wow, I am really glad I went to smarthealthtalk.com website and found out, hey, this stuff is not like such a great thing. And maybe I should actually be eliminated from my life completely. And I tell you, we try to, we try to educate people on just how powerful your dollars are because your dollars change the world. People think, oh, my little bit of money, that's not significant. I tell you, you multiply that by millions, and yes, it is significant. When we all pitch in, we all start giving our dollars to the right people, the, the corporations that really deserve it, the corporations that are not purposely poisoning us, dumping pollution like Duke Energy that has been whining over the past week. Oh, boo-hoo, we have all this coal ash that's collected and we have to dispose of it properly. We're being made to. We can't just dump it down in the river like we were doing for years, polluting the river. Um, no, we actually have to dispose of it the way the law requires us to dispose of it. And that's going to cut into our profits and our stockholders are going to be upset with us. You know, in the meantime, the rest of us have had to be exposed to their toxins in the air, in the water, and they've been po pocketing the profits. These are the kind of things that are go that's going on, folks, and we, we talk about it. We expose it right here on Smart Health Talk. We have no special interest groups sponsoring us. No, we are here for you, the people, to protect the citizens of this country because we love our country. We don't want to see our country going down in the toilet we don't want to see everyone getting so sick they can't even join the military. That's a huge problem now with recruits. Everyone's too obese. Yeah, that's the problem. Uh, that's, a, to me, a national security issue. Yeah, when we can't even have enough people uh, to be able to join our military that we need to. Uh, but it's actually a reflection of what's going on with our entire country. And I tell you, we're being starved to death. 
we're being starved to death because our food is like missing the nutrition that's supposed to be there. Uh, our neighborhoods are being sprayed with poison and we have an incredible guest with us today. I'm so excited to have her. And uh, I tell you, uh, this woman, she is courageous. That's what she is. She has been, she is, she is fearless. She was not afraid to uh, get out there and protest uh, pesticide spraying in her neighborhood. Uh, Lisa uh, Garamo, everyone, um, are you on the? Are you on Skype with us? Hey, Lisa, there you are. I gotta, Hi. I gotta like take my glasses off so I can see you because I got my close-up glasses. You look like a big blur from where I'm at right now, but oh. <laughs> but now that I take it off, I see. Wow. Hey, Lisa's a really beautiful woman, and not only that, but she's smart too. Because um, I've been talking to her, and I tell you, she is she has really got herself educated. I tell you, Lisa, if we could have everyone to be as educated as you, uh, things would be a lot different. People would not be uh, tricked into buying things. And now that you you are an educated woman. Uh, Lisa, I want you to go ahead and um, introduce yourself, but uh, when you're done with that, I, I just want you to just share with people on how your life has changed now that you are an educated person on what the heck is really going on and, you know, how, how that's opened your eyes and how it's changed your life, because I know that it, it probably has. It has. Children, our air, our water, and our earth. Um, yes, I have I've, uh, did a lot of reading. I started about four years ago. I knew a little bit about it here and there, um, but I really, really dug in because my uh, son was ill, and um, we didn't know what was going on. He suffered from migraines. That was hard for about two years. Every time we went to the parks, um, he would get a migraine, and I'm popping a pill in his mouth, and I'm thinking, my God, my kid is taking more medication than I do. And I thought, something's wrong here. So when I started digging in and doing some research, and I thought, my gosh, they are spraying pesticides everywhere. The chemicals in our house, which our house, if you're closed up, is more toxic than outside. Um, what they were doing at the schools, um, aerial spraying, the fogging, it, it was just uh, the food. It, it, was a, it was a lot. And so slowly you had to tear away all the layers of the lies and get to what the root cause is. So it's taken me a while. It's not easy. And so now I go out and because of all this knowledge that I have, my brain is going to explode. And so I need to, I go and I, I share with people and let other people know. Well, so that was that's, the most that's great. The recent thing that I did was I found out through the press enterprise the night before in Marietta, they were spraying, which is um, the fog machine in the back of the truck. And I know this happened last year. Um, this year, I decided, you know what? This isn't fair that it's next to a golf course. It is next to um, a senior assistant living, two of them, in fact. If you stood where they were going down the route to spray, uh, there was uh, apartment complexes, and it was uh, scheduled between 7 and 9 o'clock in the evening. And with it being hot right now, um, that's when people were starting to open up their windows and kind of come outside. So I, I decided to go. I made some phone calls ahead of time and talked to some people, which was really interesting. And then I went down there and I protested. I was the only one. Um, I thought more people would come. Right but on, Lisa. Woo! Because we, we deserve, we deserve a, a little bit of a salute here to uh, Lisa and her effort because that takes a lot to get out there, everyone, by yourself and, and stand up for what you think is right. And yeah. what Lisa thought was right was, um, was, you know, people having the right to know, first of all, uh, that you're being sprayed. Because yeah. did you feel that there was, like, adequate information provided to let people know ahead of time, Lisa, that this was happening? No, no, it wasn't. It was in Marietta. It came out in the Press Enterprise, which is mainly uh, Riverside, Riverside, and I know it goes through, but one of my friends checked the actual uh, Marietta website, and it wasn't even posted on there for um, the public to be notified. No, it is not enough time 
for people to um, leave, shut their windows, uh, or do other things. So, no, that needs to change. Well, you, you know what I always think uh, as well, Lisa, is that people are, uh, at least my experience, when I kind of went through the same thing, they were using the fogger on a street with a friend, a friend of ours who um, her child suffered with asthma, and it was horrible for the child. It's, uh, of course, a very expensive disease to have as well. Lots of trip, trips to the emergency room, uh, which are the most expensive, uh, mm -hmm. uh, besides like actual surgery um, and ICU. But, you know, the thing is she had to go, she had to do that. And when she started learning about pesticides and GMOs, she decided I'm getting all this stuff out of my house. She got rid of every single thing out of her house that was not organic, never had had a garden before, taught herself how to grow her own food, started feeding that to her, her children and her family, and her son's condition completely changed. The asthma symptoms were gone. They were, they were gone. So, you know, how can you not think that there was, you know, some sort of, of course, this isn't a, you know, a detailed scientific study, uh, but, you know, a mom knows her child. A mom knows. And I just feel like this mom, she knew that that was, she had a feeling that the food was, was contributing to what was happening because she did her research. She taught herself about the, how toxic these pesticides are. And she, she made the changes that had to. And I just, I like have so much respect for her. And so we got out there. We knew they were going to spray her street. They were going to spray her organic garden. They're going to spray her bees, her, her tilapia that she was growing, her chickens. You know, all this food, it was like her whole backyard was a garden. And oh. here they come with this machine without our, any of our permissions to come in, pr pretty much a apply a toxic substance to our homes. That's right. And most of the time without our knowledge. And there were babies in this, in this particular street, the way these uh, houses were designed, uh, the bedrooms faced the street. And again, it was like this kind of weather, people open up their windows at night, I open up all mine, turn off, you know, trying to be a, you know, keep my, my utility bill down. I want to say a, a, a good citizen by not overusing my, my electricity, but actually I'm trying to keep my bill down. But open the windows, and so all these people have open windows, and here comes the truck. Here, yep. and, 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 and describe for us, Lisa, what it looks like when that truck comes down the street. Uh, it's a little horrifying. Um, it, it's just like the picture, and I've never actually seen it, but you can see the thing back here in the back of the truck. And, you know, it's a picture, but that's exactly what it looks like, and it is very scary. And to see the it come out and to touch everything in its path. I mean, you're talking about the birds and, um, you know, every it's mating. See, the grass. animals are being born right now. It's, yeah, it's horrifying. You're and then to see the windows open of all the buildings that are around there and that people don't even know. I had stood there for about an hour and a half, two hours, and I caught three different joggers coming in and out of that pathway. And one lady just kind of, you know, she kind of shrugged me, and I was like, okay. And, and then she turned around and thought about it and said, you know what? I'm not going to go down there. I'm going home. What is this that you're doing? So I explained to her. And uh, so three people didn't even know that walk there every day. And I'm thinking, this, this, isn't, this isn't right. The, the alert system is, it, 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 it's totally uh, worthless as far as I'm concerned. Worthless. They yeah. How many people visit you know, the, the Vector Department's website, visit uh, the Press Enterprise. I don't know how many hits they get per day, but um, I doubt that it's 100% of the people that live in, live in that neighborhood. And this is, you know, people have a right to know if this yes, is going to be happening. And I just feel like they're, they're trying to keep us from having an opportunity to protest this action in our neighborhoods. If we have a couple of days notice ahead of time, hey, we're going to get organized. We're going to have the media there. We're going to have signs out there. Uh, we're going to be trying to block them just like we did uh, over in uh, our friend's neighborhood. And 
you know, we were out there with chains and ropes, which I wouldn't recommend for I anyone know. to do. <laughs> but <laughs> we did have a couple of close calls there with some uh, when some cars came down the road. It got a little, it got a little close uh, a couple times. Leslie and Phillips, some environmentalists, people who live in this neighborhood, they are not happy about it. They are out here this morning to protest, attempting to keep trucks, vector control trucks specifically, from entering this neighborhood with this rope. They say they are concerned about the chemicals that are being used. Now, we did see two vector control trucks earlier this morning continuing with this spraying operation. It's being done to get rid of mosquito infestations and to prevent any spread of West Nile virus. But um, I tell you, we, we made our point. We were on the cha Channel 7 News. They covered us and gave us a chance to speak up. But we really, I feel like, you know, that, that was just like a little blip. Uh, because this is happening it in is. all these different, uh, different areas. In L.A. County, Riverside County, San Bernardino County, you know, all around us. Is that what, yeah. you, is that what you have, um, have you done? learned in your research, Lisa? Yes, it is. And I, I think that the disconnection here is from the, the, the city who hires the vector control, and then the vector control is not, um, they don't communicate. So when I called the city, the city said because there are mosquitoes. When I called vector control, and just because I had said this to somebody, and they said, well, why aren't they using this? This is the least toxic first. Um, before the aerial spraying. So I asked Vector Control, what are you doing before you come to the conclusion that it's so bad that we have to pollute the air and the people around that area with toxic chemicals? There, there needs to be a process. And, and so I try to go out and close that gap, give the information and um, see if we can close that so everybody can come together so we do have adequate warning for people. Um, uh, don't take my choice away from me. Let me have a choice of leaving or like we do going and stopping and protesting and things like that. Uh, the gap needs to be closed. So yeah, that was really difficult to hear both Vector and I was, I was on the phone with both of them up until five o'clock and then went down there at six to try to uh, try to stop it. They did, they did take some precautions. Uh, the city worker went up and down the trail where people jog, and he did put the caution tape, and then he waited an hour um, before he sprayed. So um, they're not out to get us, but there, there needs to be adequate warning. It, it's just ridiculous. It's out of control. It's just toxic chaos. Well, uh, I, I, I'm actually the bad cop here because, uh, <laughs> uh -huh, yeah, because, um, you know, I went through, I went to the vector department uh, meeting uh, mm -hmm. that where they announced they would be having their next meeting in their new boardroom, uh, their brand spanking new one, one which w the older one looked uh, fine to me. I'm sure the other one was nicer. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, you just kind of wonder where is the funding coming from to, you uh, you know, to, to support, you know, the vector department getting, you know, like a new boardroom. And the bottom line is pesticides are big money for that department. Yes, they are. And so it's bringing a lot of money into their department. And they want, they want, they must, because, you know, I just look at, uh, we have so many other ways of dealing with this problem, Lisa. Yes. Mosquitoes, the number one thing, I am a public health person. The number one thing is we start educating the public on prevention. Mm -hmm. How do we how do we keep this from these from ever even getting to be mosquitoes flying in the air? And then the whole idea of oh we're going to come with this giant sprayer, and uh -huh. we're we're going to hit a mosquito, and we're mm -hmm. going to hit the mosquito that's infected. You know, like what are the friggin' odds? And they, you would not believe this, but in other states, especially in Texas, uh, those areas, these very same pesticides, which I have spent hours and hours researching, the one that they used in my neighborhood, Merit, there, it, is, it has all kinds of side effects. It is not a non-toxic pesticide. They try to make, oh, it magically goes away. 
once yeah. the sun hits it, it'll magically go away. And but there is like warnings on there, like if the if you if someone comes and sprays and then you see the sprinklers coming on and you know this has to be happening because they're not even warning people ahead of time about the spraying. So here no. they come, they spray and people have their, their sprinkler set for, you know, five o'clock in the morning when we went out they were they were out there at like you know three or four o'clock in the morning so people have their sprinklers set for early in the morning especially during the summer mm -hmm. and when it comes on it's washing that pesticide into our waterways that's right it kills amphibians this merit yeah. it like to, it kills all these amphibians which is you know a wide range of different um, species there uh, that are being affected besides frogs and that right there is a huge red flag to me. It's and yet, you know, just going right on, you know, when they have this warning that says, if you see this, call the state immediately. Mm -hmm. Call the state immediately. Now, you know they're out there spraying this stuff, and people's pesticide, I mean, excuse me, p people's uh, sprinklers are coming on right and left, and this pesticide is being washed into the gutter and going right into our waterways to go and contaminate it, and kill amphibians and I just wanna I'm gonna keep saying this uh, phone number throughout our show everyone this is the state pesticide number 800-491-1899 that's 800-491-1899 and you know this number Lisa mm -hmm. you, they make it so hard to find I went, you know, you go yeah. to the California pesticide website, and I'm looking for the number to call them. I am looking. I'm, I am not a, you know, computer Ill illiterate or internet <laughs> illiterate person. I get, you know, I use this like hours every day. And so for me to go to a website and not be able to find a state department that is there to service us, that they, they are so... Uh, inaccessible. I could not find this number anywhere. I had to go back and find like the sheet that they had sent me uh, when they said, oh, by the way, we're going to be spraying your house uh, for the Asian citrus psyllid, which they managed to kill everything after that. I didn't see any more monarch butterflies. I had caterpillars. I had bees, you yeah. know, and just, you know, everything gone because that is what a pesticide is. That's right. It's meant to kill. That's it. You summed it yeah. up. You summed it up perfectly, Lisa. And that is what it is. It targets our cells. It targets any cell that it can come in contact with. That's right. As soon as it comes in contact in so many different ways, it goes in through your nose, mm -hmm. into your lungs. You come out getting ready to go to work, going and getting into your car. You have no idea that you're your yard, your whole front yard has just been sprayed. That's and, right. And so you're, you know, breathing this stuff in and you don't even know it. And then later on in the day, you feel all sick and nauseous and you're wondering, yeah. what the heck? And you, and you people write that off because we feel a little ill and you just kind of lay down and we don't realize that we're probably being poisoned somewhere. Or how about this, Lisa? They think they have West Nile virus. <laughs> Because it's okay. like the same symptoms. Uh, yes, it, it could be like exactly. the same symptoms. And doctors are not educated. They, um, they are clueless on how to recognize. Uh, I'm not saying all doctors, of course. Uh, yeah. But this is not part of the normal training, is to, um, is to know how to recognize pesticide poisoning. And the thing is, like these West Nile virus tests, and I... I I got this from the number one pesticide scientist in the country, Dr. Michael Hansen from Consumers Union. And he said that the flu, they're, they're like this flat, these flaboviruses, I think is what it's called. And the West Nile virus and um, the flu virus are in the same category. As so, far as so, so what happens is if you've had a flu shot, and then you go get tested for West Nile, you could have a false positive. And this is the same for Zika, everyone. Zika uh. is also, which is a big friggin' lie because there are, um, there could be like a dozen 
uh, births per 10,000 that would have microcephaly that had nothing to do with Zika. So where any, way before Zika came along, we already had a dozen babies per 10,000 being born with microcephaly. How are they for sure, you know, this was caused by Zika when we have all these different ways that microcephaly can be caused, including being exposed to pesticides can actually cause microcephaly. And so people could be being exposed, a pregnant women, people with cancer, people with asthma, you know, all these different people are being exposed while they're sleeping in their bedrooms. They're, they're being exposed to these pesticides. They have no clue. And it's ineffective. What, yeah. what, what is the number one thing uh, that you have been taught that we can do to stop mosquitoes? The number one thing is um, probably what you're using at home. Uh, get, rid of, get rid of the uh, standing water around Exactly. You. Help a neighbor sometimes, because I live uh, next to an a elderly community all on that side of my town, and some of them can't even get out of the house, but we help neighbors, um, inform neighbors, make sure you use the correct kind of lotion when you're going out in the evening and make sure that's not toxic also. That is such, a, that's perfect advice, Lisa, and yes. those, and you, you said the, the, the perfect answer because getting rid of the standing water is the number one thing. If we just get rid of standing water, they have no place to breed. And guess what? There's no mosquitoes. And then we need no pesticides. And they are spraying over and over and over again. I'm reading about like Miami-Dade County. There's a doctor that actually filed a, uh, some sort of injunction or something to try and stop. You would have loved to have had him on your team, wouldn't you, Lisa? Uh -huh. But he, 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 um, he would filed some, something to try and stop the insanity. And before this, these people were being hit with another pesticide called nailed. Is that appropriate or what? I've been nailed, man. I've been nailed. It just came from the, it just came from the, the, from the clouds, and it just landed right on me. And all I know is from now on, I know I've been nailed. <laughs> I, you know, and let me tell you, you do not want to be nailed, okay? Because. Uh, nailed is a very toxic pesticide. It's, it's very toxic. And they're spraying it from the planes. And what you were saying, Lisa, that they were using aerial spraying. Uh, where where was the aerial spraying happening? Um, the aerial spraying was happening in Orange County. So I've been following following a few people over there. Um, I haven't heard anything lately. So hopefully they had it uh, stopped over there. See, this um, is what they want us to think. And I'm really yeah. glad that you said that because we, I am totally guilty of this. And that's why I can even talk about it and explain it to everybody else. We want so badly for this to stop. We do not want to have to deal with being poisoned and have to go fight this fight to get these people to stop poisoning us, stop poisoning our neighborhoods. Um, and... It, it, we, we get into, it's, it's like we get into this head, a mode in our head where we think, oh, well, um, I really haven't heard of any big sprains, but look how long it took them to put the notice out and be out there spraying, Lisa. It took less than like 12 hours, right? Before yep. they were out there, but when they put the notice out. So we cannot sit around thinking, oh, uh, we're fine. No, they're not going to spray. No, we can never, ever just be, think that we're, uh, we're, we're fine and that they're not going to spray and, and get into that mode. We have to be on top of our toes all the time. We need to be That's taking right. action right now before they even send, because like as soon as, you know, for them to like only give 12 hours notice, that is That's totally ridiculous. It's unacceptable. It is unacceptable to give that short of notice by poisoning us. That, that's, it's unacceptable. Th and this it's is our babies. This is our babies, our family, yes. our yard where our children play, mm -hmm. where our pets run. You know, and um, 
it, it's like your garden is not an organic garden anymore. Your fruit no. tree is not an organic fruit tree anymore. How dare right. they? How dare yeah. they come in people's yards and poison the very food they work so hard to grow? And I know I have had my own organic garden. I don't know about you, Lisa, but it is a heck of a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It is. And the whole idea of someone just coming and spraying and poisoning all my hard work when I went. So, I mean, today I have, because, of course, we have our BlueMonarchProject.com, everyone. We're trying to stop the pesticide spraying. We're trying to bring the monarchs back in, um, in the Inland Empire area and all around. We, we don't care. Just anywhere. We want to stop the spraying. Uh, but there, we used to have a major migration pathway over in the whole Loma Linda Redlands area. We're trying to bring that back. But they are spraying pesticides all around us. And I heard people say that the dog park, they, they went to the dog park and the grass was like weird. They could tell, and I actually, I have the records, and I know that the city of Loma Linda, the city of Redlands, all these different cities, the Parks Department, uh, we have schools, we have sprains. You mentioned schools earlier, Lisa, and yeah. they are, they, we have all these farms and orchards located right across the street from schools. Who was the city planner? Because I would fire them in a second. Yes. If, I, if I knew who that person was, if they still have a job, they should be fired. How dare you put a farm right across the street from where our children I are know. going to school? And when I, I look at what pesticides they're using, I look them up. These are hormone disruptors. Oh, my God. They yes. disturb the whole puberty cycle. They can, by girls being exposed to this, they can later on have trouble conceiving a child. Where where do we have the right to do this to our children? Yeah, just just going know. to school. This yep. is not acceptable in any way, shape, or form, and it needs to stop. And I don't want to have to go and be like seriously calling people out and pointing a finger and saying, you know, you guys are really, really bad. <laughs> Instead, I want I want quiet. Welcome to Smart Health Talk with your host, Elaine McFadden. Hey, everyone. We did it. Woo! You're listening to Smart Health Talk radio show on KCAA, and I'm your host, Elaine McFadden. Uh, I'm a registered dietitian with a master's in public health, so I get to be your personal dietitian right now, and I hope you're going to choose to stay tuned in for the entire show because we got some critical information for your neighborhood, for your life, for your children, your family. That's what we specialize in here, making sure our public stays protected. Because I tell you, you may think you're safe, but there's a lot of nasty stuff going on out there. I tell you, there is like pesticide spraying right and left. If it's not the city or the county or the state, it's like biz local businesses, it's your neighbor. Uh, your next door neighbor, your neighbor down the street, all these people spraying pesticide and they're drifting right over onto your house. And I tell you, you should be worried because these pesticides are now being classified by the state as cancer causing. That is how serious this is. And I tell you, that is just the tip of the iceberg for the kind of information that I found out. I, you don't want to be exposed to this stuff. You do not want your family, your pets, your loved ones to be exposed to these poisons, and that's what they are. I don't care what, how much they try to normalize it, create all these commercials, making, oh yeah, save for your family, spray it all over your yard, yeah, right. I'm telling you, they're asking you to spray a cancer-causing substance. You're, you're putting it around your dog's neck, too, with these flea collars, and they are pure pesticide, 
hormone disruptors. Read the instructions. Please read the instructions before you buy because you will be shocked. You are not allowed to touch your dog for like days and you have to keep all the kids away from it. I mean, on and on and on, it's very serious and we're pretty much feeding our animals pesticides as well. It's pure poison. Uh, there are better ways of doing this and that's all the kind of stuff we talk about on our social media and we are there on social media for you uh, a lot of, most of the time uh, but busy 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 on you know everything from Twitter to uh, Instagram we got our website going on just full of information for you that I mean it could be life-changing information you could be going through our website and just going wow I've been like using this stuff like every single day and you're like wow but people think just because government is like doing something that somehow you know that we don't have the right to change this and I want to say um, where's my I want to say this number again everyone uh, here, let me get back to my uh, the phone number 800 491 1899 Call this number, 800-491-1899. Tell the state you opt out of any spraying of your home. And I'm going to tell you right now, first of all, they, they will try to get you to not opt out. There is nothing, they can't, there's no pesticide police that's going to come after you or anything no. like that. They are not going to fine you, but they want to make you think that. But just stand up to their intimidation techniques. If they say, oh, well, how come you don't want us, you know, to spray? Just say, because I don't want you to. And don't. And then they try to say, oh, sign this. You know, just sign it. They, they can't do anything to you. All of this is intimidation techniques for you to be afraid to tell them no the next time. They'll think, oh, well, she's going to think twice the next time about telling us we can't spray her yard. You know, I, I just feel like, you know, how dare you? How dare you even think this is right? And why are we making a sacrifice here? What, you know, we, I feel like the sacrificial lamb, man. We're sacrificing my I health. Know. You know, for what? <clears throat> for what? To save the trees that are so weak from using all these cheap chemicals. And yes. because I have organic farmers that I buy from at the farmer's market, they don't have any problems. They yep. don't have any problem with the greening disease. You know, the, it's the people that are using the cheap chemicals and all the pesticide that have the problem. <clears throat> so they use, these, they use those techniques, they have a problem, and then the rest of us have to be poisoned to save those yep. trees and in that, in that industry. Yep. So I, I'm being, my health is being sacrificed to save the citrus industry that's had years of bad agricultural practices. Shortcuts. Yep. Is what, that's what Roundup is a shortcut. Oh, God, Roundup. <laughs> yeah, which is now on the Prop 65 yes, list, yes. everyone, in case you haven't heard. That's hey, where's, Pit, where's, where's Pitbull? Brandon, do you have that yep. one? <clears throat> okay, Brandon, Brandon's gonna, we're gonna, that's right, that's right, we're celebrating Monsanto's loss, our win, because I did everything, everything to take that down, to keep Roundup off the Prop 65 list, they were, they, they had no problem doing whatever underhanded trick or lie they had to do, but they... Everyone right. saw through it, and they lost, didn't they, Lisa? That's right. And That's it is right. now a warning. At you, Every time you try to buy that Roundup that you watch a commercial for, that they try to get you to spray around your home, has a cancer warning on there. So think twice. Yep. If you have any Roundup, please don't right. think Get in your head, I have to finish the bottle, no. you know, and then I'll throw it away. Please, not one more drop. Do not use one more drop of Roundup, everyone. We are going to start like organizing more and more drop-off sites for people to get rid of these pesticides that are sitting in their garages that we have no reason to be using them whatsoever. Whatsoever. And I think of, of the issue with that is, is people like, well, I only spray it two times a year. 
um, or I only use a little bit, or I only do a few weeds. Well, first, if you only have a few weeds, you should probably be pulling them. Um, it's not that hard. I do it all the time. It's not that hard. And what people don't realize is we're doing chemical on top of chemical on top of chemical on top of chemical. And then our bodies can't detox these chemicals. Our bodies work wonders. We can detox a lot. But when we have a overload, then we get sick. And then people think, oh, cancer. Well, cancer's a symptom. A lot of these diseases can, are symptoms of what's already going on in our body. So, I mean, I'm not a doctor. Yeah, I, no, you know, but you're right. Your body it, does talk. If you're not feeling right, yeah. there, there's a reason for it. There's a reason. And you need to change something. And you need to, like, not ignore it, for one thing, and go talk it's to your doctor, go see your doctor on a regular basis. Right. And please go and look, read, look for our blogs under, um, under our, it's not under, recent, under our news uh, tab, because we have on single payer. And see, this is one of the things. When we keep low-income people from being able to go to the doctor, um, they're the ones that are exposed the most to these pesticides. And yep. so we, we miss the opportunity to document what all the side effects that are happening because of this. And guess what's happening? The people that are documenting this because they have good health care is all the Arabs over in Saudi Arabia and Yemen and that. And what they're finding is the pesticides are the cause of all these diseases over there. That is that this just came out. This, that was their conclusion, everyone. And it's my conclusion, too. Stay away from these things. You don't need them. Start buying organic. Go to the farmer's market. Ask the farmer before you buy the produce, do you use organic methods? Please make sure and just say, well, if they don't say, well, I'm on a special diet, I am on a no pesticide diet, so I'm not going to be buying this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we have, uh, we only have one minute left. What should we use it? What should we say with this last minute, Lisa? <laughs> Do take some action. Every little bit helps. Change things out in your house. Change things out in your grocery store. Say something to the principal, to the city. Call the uh, Department of Pesticide Regulations. Ask them questions. Get your brain start rolling in that direction, and um, live healthy the best that we can we can do. And stay positive. Control. Yeah, like stay positive yeah. because that's and make sure you give your dollars to the people that deserve it. Quit giving them oh, to these okay. big corporations. Everyone will change the world by who we give our dollars because without our dollars they're nothing they will shrivel up and go away and why do we want to keep people around that are poisoning us and doing all these horrible things to our environment 800-491-1899 call and opt out of any pesticide spray and say you guys stay out of my yard with your poison i do not want it and I want to thank Lisa so much uh, for uh, joining us today, Lisa. You were absolutely terrific and an inspiration. And uh, we're, we're, we're going to, more of us are going to be out there helping you the next time, I promise. Okay, everyone, Smart Health Talk. Look for us on social media and tune in next Tuesday, 4 o'clock. We'll be right here at smarthealth.com. I'm Elaine McFadden, your host, saying bye organic. Bye. KCAA Loma Linda, 1050 AM, 106.5 FM, and now 102.3 FM. Be sure to visit our website at smarthealthtalk.com.